isn't it? Same old snake oil. Two is more professionally packed. Or a fake but impressive looking machine, which aims to do miraculous things to the human body. But it's still the same old snake oil. Today, more than ever, you and I are all too often taken by the con man and his products and devices with promises to cure all the ills that trouble us. Come out. I need something to take care of the stiffness in this. They want to operate. But if there is anything that will dissolve this lump instead, huh? If I take this, will I lose weight? You say this will supply special nutrient to tone up sagging space. Do this nagging baggage of mine? and help my kidney trouble? You see, these heart palpitations will really disappear? I've got the answer right here, ladies and gentlemen, to everything that ails you. Now, step right up. Will you come in closer, please? Now, I have here testimonials from people who have been cured. I said cured of backache, nervousness. Can't. Oh, any number of diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't actually take my word for it. I've got the answer right But it's still the same old snake oil. chronic bursitis, and a nervous tick. I suppose this is science's answer for all of them. Friend, this has a secret ingredient which will absolutely relieve every single symptom of hangnail, bursitis, tick, all the ancient diseases that have plagued mankind. The cruel practice of making money on people's worries appeared throughout the years as quackery. The word comes from the old Dutch quack salver, one who quacks like a duck about his salves and remedies. Time has made a few changes, but quackery today is still essentially built on misinformation, distortion, mental suggestion, fadism, and half-truths of well-being. And it is still spread in an atmosphere of ignorance, fear, and superstition. Wherever people have reason to worry about their health or good looks. When the social historians write the story of our times, they will surely record the fact that midway through the 20th century, Americans became concerned with their waistlines. Good gracious. And their weight. And with good reason. Excess weight can be a serious health problem. And so quackery in one of its modern guises is part of this story, too. A big part. Mm. Sure you won't have one? Delicious. No, no, I I'm afraid I can't. It's not on my diet. That's old fashioned. You don't have to worry about diacy to take these pills. They rearrange the calories. Quackery today, in one of its many forms, floods the market with hundreds of products which claim a magic ability to do some such ridiculous thing as rearrange calories or melt away fat or inhibit weight. All of them are worthless. It's true that there are certain legitimate products which can help curb the appetite, but these medicines are safe only when prescribed and taken under a doctor's supervision. Here's the basic truth about overweight. Nothing yet has been discovered that takes the place of sensible dieting. It's the only sure, safe way to control weight. For in spite of rumors or claims to the contrary, calories do count. Other forms of quackery lure victims in other ways. Fake devices, for example, which are supposed to eliminate the accumulated deposits of a full, rich life. And this kind of swindle, which operates on human vanity, potions and creams that promise to erase the telltale marks of age and restore what time has taken away. 
The benefits of cosmetics, of course, have been reaped by both men and women for countless centuries, just as the rewards of sensible exercise have also been recognized. But quackery strikes well beyond these legitimate purposes by making claims that can never be fulfilled. Here are the sober facts on the aging process. Man has not yet discovered the legendary fountain of youth. No product, no device yet developed can grow hair on a bald head, or erase the furrows of age, or restore the fresh beauty and vigor of youth. Any promises to perform these miracles, however tempting they sound, are false. Medical and nutritional quackery, too, is big business today. It robs the American people of hundreds of millions of dollars each year. What is it? Nothing but old-fashioned quackery in modern dress. But the phony practitioner is not as visible as he used to be. And when we do see him, he's no longer a county fair medicine man. Today's peddlers of hokum get around in many different disguises. For example, you could encounter one at your front door any day. Many Americans have. Good afternoon, madam. I represent the Nutritional and Biological Health Institute. Your name has been suggested to us as one of the intelligent, far-sighted members of your community interested in being informed about science's latest discovery in the field of dietary arrangements. I brought with me lots of material this afternoon that I'd like you to take a look. Door-to-door -door peddling is one way of selling good, honest products. But this method is also used by phony promoters of health frauds and swindles. A treatise written by Dr. Goodfellow. The lecture hall is another favorite stomping ground for a different kind of con man. The food quack. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great pleasure. He operates by implying there's something wrong with America's food, by arousing fear and suspicion about our regular daily food supply. The constant depletion of our soil, year by year, is taking away more and more of the nourishing natural elements nature puts into food. And what isn't destroyed that way certainly is by fertilizers, pesticides, and chemicals. What do we buy at the market? Food stripped of nature's vitamins. Food contaminated with chemicals. And not only that, modern methods of cooking and over-processing claims destroy the nutritional value of food. And we all wind up with aches, pains, that tired feeling, and what the bunkum artist calls subclinical deficiency diseases. But don't despair. The book will save us. Very often, the book is clever, convincing. It may extol the superior virtues of blackstrap molasses, or royal jelly, or honey and vinegar, or whatever. And the promoter, of course, just happens to have a supply of the product with him, along with the book or magazine. True, the products themselves may not be dangerous, but worthless products can harm the sick by causing delay in getting proper treatment. But whatever the food fad happens to be, the idea behind these phony promotions is one and indivisible to take money out of your pocket and transfer it to the pocket of the promoter. Here are the facts about food. Americans today are better off nutritionally than any people in the history of man. The laws of the land protect our food supply against any harmful residues or pesticides, preservatives or other additives. The food at our corner groceries and supermarkets, in our restaurants and in our homes, contain all the vitamins, minerals, and quality factors needed for good nutrition. Natural nutritional quality is not only protected, but sometimes even improved by modern processing methods and standards. Here's still another angle to health frauds and swindles. The oldest, 
and most dangerous game of all, the cure-all drug. This form hides in the shadows and fringes of medical science and thrives on misleading promises to cure serious illness and disease. The old-time medicine man could sell his snake oil by positively guaranteeing it would cure any and every disease known to man and beast. But the beginning of the end came for all that with the passage of the first pure food and drug laws back in 1906. Over the years, these laws have become tighter and stronger. Today, all new drugs must be proved safe and effective before they can be marketed. In other words, the medicine must be safe and must do what's claimed for it. But there are always the handful that operate outside the law. A few misguided promoters peddle cures for incurable diseases. Some of them honestly believe in the useless medication. More, however, are bunkum artists, without pity or conscience, willing to risk the lives of fellow human beings to line their own pockets. Fortunately, this form of quackery in medicine is gradually being eliminated by our food and drug laws. But there's still another form, equally dangerous and far more difficult to control. Phony machines and devices which are supposed to diagnose and treat disease. Unlike new drugs, therapeutic devices do not have to be proved either safe or effective before they are sold or used. And so medical device quackery continues to thrive, to feed off human weaknesses, to capitalize on genuine scientific advances. There are, of course, many valuable medical devices today which truly work medical miracles, like this heart-lung machine. People understandably have faith in them and the wonders they perform. But there are many fake devices, equally impressive looking to the untrained eye. It's easy for anyone but an expert to be fooled by a machine like this, especially when the practitioner puts up an impressive medical front. May I have your hand? You won't feel anything. You won't feel the current going through at all. There will be current running through from here, through this, through the machine, and there, that way we will get the readings. But you won't feel it. Just hold the chin up. I'm afraid the uh, readings are not favorable. Findings show a high cellular waste exchange rate in the abdominal region. Well, I'm going to have to take a few more readings to confirm the diagnosis. Quackery flourishes in an atmosphere of pain the threat of serious illness, fear, terrible anxiety. In desperation, almost all of us tend to grasp at straws, at anything, no matter how ridiculous the device or the claims made for it. Frankly, it doesn't look too good. Yes, let's face it. It looks very much like cancer. Science, fortunately, has given us the equipment to fight and defeat this disease. This machine, which diagnosed you, is one of science's greatest marvels. Not only measures electrical currents in the body, also can influence. And cancer, too, is a matter of electrical current. Why this machine has been so highly effective in treating many forms of cancer without surgery or x-rays, particularly the kind you just relax. Well, here is the brutal core of the charlatan's crime, 
The machine which diagnosed and is now going to treat this is a total and complete fake. He's being sold a false hope. Because of this, if he really is suffering from a serious illness, he is being deprived of his one chance to live. A meeting and precious time is slipping by. Please, you've wasted two months. You must see Dr. Thompson now, today. He wanted you to come to the hospital weeks ago. I don't have to see Dr. Thompson. He's going to give me the same old answer. Oh, we can't be sure. We need more tests. Uh, an exploratory operation. I've heard all of that before. Besides, I've got the real answer now. And from a machine that can diagnose without surgery. And let me tell you one other thing. That machine is going to cure me. That machine? We don't know anything about that machine. Maybe you don't, but I do. And don't forget, a lot of very important people have spoken out in favor of it. People, yes. But no medical experts. We have to have the best advice medical science can give us. Medical doctors. You know them. What if they got against it? They use some pretty complicated gadgets themselves. I was in Dr. Thompson's office for my checkup. He wired me and strapped me to a machine that was pretty wide. Oh, George, stop lying to yourself. You know darn well that that was for an electrocardiogram. Now, that machine has been around a long time in every doctor's office. For heart checkups and things, you must know there's a difference. Please, let's talk it over with Dr. Thompson. Yes, clear-headedness and reason have vanished. The machine and the quay. Quick diagnosis. Hope of complete cure. Happy ending. Not all device quackery takes place in an impressive office with an impressive practitioner to set the scene. I'm coming. I'm coming. Who is it? Hi, Victoria. Moment. Mrs. Schmollendorf? Yes. Thank you. One moment. Package for you, Mrs. Schmollendorf. Pretty heavy. Better be careful. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is heavy. Yeah. No, it is. The article I read said it would help for sure. And I need help. You know I do. There is no device, no treatment. No drug which can truthfully be called a cure for arthritis. But that means nothing to the health fraud peddler that a cure exists, and to make them pay for it. And they do pay heavily for a few hours, a few days, a few months of hope, and then bitter dissolution. We've tried about everything. Let's hope this will work. Across the length and breadth of this land, Quackery fattens on the worries, suffering, and hopes of human beings in trouble. How can we protect ourselves against quackery? How can we recognize it? How can we, its victims, tell the phony from the real? Know what is false, Salad? Well, first of all... Dear, it's the most marvelous system for drying up ulcers. I heard about it from my sister. 
And she had it straight from a friend who was absolutely cured of a heart. When you hear something like this, close your ears. Quackery. People who give word of mouth testimonials. For that matter, endorsements or testimonials from patients themselves are always questionable. In matters of health and medicine. If the product is promoted with such testimonials, be on guard. And remember that a statement is not necessarily true just because you read it somewhere. Or rules to keep in mind, too. This secret product is so new, ladies and gentlemen, that the formula is known to only a very few. The word secret is a danger signal. If this claim is made for a health product or device, you can be pretty sure it's a phony. Everything there is to know about this product is effective for many conditions and diseases because scientifically it all depends... You can be pretty sure it's worthless, too, if this kind of claim is made, that it will treat or cure a wide variety of ailments, especially the diseases for which medical science still has found no answer. Of course, the medical doctors won't have anything good to say about my technique. <laughs> They're a closed corporation. I can't... Does the man with the product or device claim that he's being persecuted by the medical profession, stupidity or stubbornness? If so, watch out. This is one of the surest signs that quackery is at work. The most important thing of all to remember is this. Your family doctor is your closest ally in matters relating to your health and well-being. If he doesn't have the answer himself, he'll send you to a specialist. Other federal agencies, as well as the Food and Drug Administration, are deeply involved in combating the quackery problem. The Justice Department, for example, brings court action on recommendations of FDA for seizing fake products like this and removing them from the market. The department also prosecutes phony promoters of health and medical frauds and brings them to justice. The department of the post office ferrets out mail frauds, like this one. But in order to set legal wheels turning, there must be victims who are willing to register complaints and testify in court. It's often difficult to locate these witnesses. Personal pride and shattered vanity hold them back. The Federal Trade Commission, FTC, is responsible in the medical field for preventing false and misleading advertising in newspapers, magazines, radio and television commercials, and so on. In a case like this, the FTC can take action to stop the false claims. State and local licensing and law enforcement agencies also fight quackery. Not only worthless products, but fake practitioners as well. Combined efforts of all of these government agencies and Congress and the American Medical Association and the voluntary health agencies, science and law working together to protect you, still aren't enough. You must join the battle by protecting yourself and your family from health frauds. When you're in trouble, that's not always easy. But in the end, being victimized can be far worse. It can mean not only your money, but your life. <laughs>